And then the very last thing I want to show you today is a line chart. And a line chart usually shows a change in a single variable over time. Okay, so it shows a pattern. Uh, the population of the world uh, chart that I showed you just a little bit ago with all of the lines on it was a line chart. Uh, it highlights relationships between two continuous variables. So how much money did I make over last year? So I chart it by month. Each month I would put the, the month and the, the amount that I made that month and then it would show a line that showed that, that variable change over time. Okay, so it shows the uh, progression or a change in two data points. Line charts are similarly easy to make. I'm going to create a new data set for this. And basically, it's got country, year, and population. It's a simple version of the previous data set. And if I create that, what you can see here is I've got Greenland and Antarctica. Not sure why I chose those. And I completely made up to population. Uh, there's no way Antarctica has this many people living there. <clears throat> but I have the years from 1980 to 1988 for each one of those and the population for each year. So if I put that as a line chart, it's remarkably easy. It's a little bit more involved because I'm doing a lot of things here. So I have px dot line, and I'm saying the x and y variables, year is left and right, population is up and down. The shape, if I use line shape equals spline, it makes it a smooth line. So let's get rid of some of these things. This is kind of the minimum. So I have X, Y, and the color is gonna be on country. That separates the lines into two. I'm gonna comment that one out. And now I have Greenland and Antarctica, population over time. Okay, everybody kind of knows what to do with that. But I wanna illustrate how much cooler I can make this with just adding a few things. I'm gonna add the line shape, which smooths it out. I'm gonna put the, I'm gonna put a dot at each year along with the population in a little note. And I'm gonna change the height to 700 because it's kind of squished vertically. And I'm gonna leave color equals country in there. And I'm gonna put the, the each little label on the bottom right. So now, with just a few arguments, I can do this, which looks a whole lot cooler and makes it really easy to compare the, the population differences at each segment. By the way, you can change the appearance of literally every aspect of this with, with arguments. I just haven't because I don't wanna to get too crazy with all of the extra arguments and getting into the details. You can change the background you can change the grid line color, the size and font of these things. You can change the labels. You can literally change all of that stuff. It's highly customizable. And you can display the interactive uh, chart on a web page if you want. Uh, when, you, when you do this from within PyCharm, in fact, um, let me just show you really quick, because this is kind of interesting. What do I have in PyCharm here that I can play with? I wanna show you what this does. So let's get rid of this stuff. Okay, so we'll create that population data in there. And I'm just taking the same stuff. Since it's self-contained, it should be okay here. I'm gonna not print that. Okay, this should in theory work just fine. So let's let's run this. 
but I want I just want to show you something cool. Notice what it did. When I ran that script, it opened it up in a web browser for me. And it is all fully interactive. So I could literally take the code from this web page and I could put it on the home page of my website and have this be interactive just like this on any web page out there. I could put it on Google Sites, I could put it on Squarespace, I could put it I could put it on literally any type of web page. Or I could easily obviously take a screenshot and put it on social media or share it however I want. So that's just the the cool sort of flexibility that you have. And there's actually a um, there's actually a Python module that allows you to save Plotly uh, charts as static images straight from your Python program. So you could you could crank out a bunch of them and save them as images and then use them however you want. So there's a huge amount of flexibility there. But uh, the end result is just really, really cool as far as what you can do uh, with the data. And being able to play around with that data is really, really nice. And that just opens, I didn't have to do anything special other than in PyCharm, just making sure that I have Pandas and Plotly Express. These are not necessary. If I have Pandas and Plotly installed in the Python packages down here in PyCharm, then I can go crazy with that stuff. And it does it all for me. It opens it up in my web browser and does all that natively. So it's really, really useful.